Anthony Fantano here, the internet's Halloween, 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 Halloween review. The Bad Plus made possible. These guys are a musical trio that has remained difficult to accurately categorize over the years. Puppies. Blending elements of experimental music with jazz, rock, pop, and doing cover songs of modern and mainstream classics long before the dudes in Bad Bad Not Good were doing odd future reinterpretations. Now, I first remember stumbling upon these guys in college, hearing covers of theirs like Black Sabbath's Iron Man or Nirvana's Smell Like Teen Spirit, and that did catch my attention and I was able to, you know, kind of get into other covers of theirs at the time or just they ended up putting out later from Blondie. Queen, Interpol, Pixies, I'm pretty sure they covered David Bowie as well. And despite the fact that I've always liked the idea of the Bat Plus and have been, I guess, consistently impressed with their musicianship, I always thought their covers really overshadowed their originals. And their cover songs never really stuck with me past the novelty of the first couple listens. However, recently the band has been working more and more to kind of stand on the merits of its own material instead. The LP they put out a couple years ago, their last album, Never Stop, was their first full-length LP to feature just originals. And one of their albums prior to that, Suspicious Activity, actually only featured one single cover, a cover of the Chariots of Fire theme written by Vangelis. And this new LP goes down that same road. Only one single cover, and it is the last track, the Paul Motion song, Victoria, which is really one of the most obscure songs the band has ever revised. And I actually think the Bad Plus's recent focus on original material has kind of revitalized the band. Because not only are they playing with some pretty refreshing experimental ideas on this album, but there are actually elements of electronic music that make it onto this LP as well, through the sounds of synthesizers, drum machines, and some weird experimental glitchy electronics as well. And even as there is a lack of covers on this new LP, the band continues to blend genres, rock, pop, jazz, avant-garde jazz, free improvisation, as well as progressive rock too. The track Pound for Pound opens up with a beautiful Beautiful melody. I mean gorgeous melody. It's a track that is just contemplative and very moving, and I like how the wondrous lead melody on this track slowly gets embellished more and more with some nice chords, bass, some electronics kind of bubbling subtly in the background along with some acoustic drums. It's a delicate song, but the band takes a complete 180 on the next track, Seven Minute Mind, and does something completely hard, riffing, rigid, a lot less fluid because this is a multi-phase track. The band just all of a sudden changes shape, groove, and sound all over this track. And right after that, the song Re-Elect That, which, I mean, is not one of my favorites on this LP, but still very good, meanders a little bit at its beginning because of this kind of free improvisation moment that drags on just a little, but still, the band's chemistry, their kinetic energy on this, their performance keeps me on the edge of my seat. And the suspense is certainly well worth it at the end of the track when the band busts into this kind of militaristic musical mood with, with these kooky synth horns kind of soaring over these drums that, that are just really tight and stern. The song Wolf Out presents even more riffs and works in a time signature so odd I would need to listen to this track a dozen more times to accurately count it out. However, I don't really feel the impulse to because the band plays in this odd groove so fluidly it almost makes me want to dance to it. The tracks Sing for a Silver Dollar and For My Eyes Only are kind of slow burners with chords that just work better at this pace. Very dramatic. And Ethan Iverson plays his piano so well on these tracks. He really shines with his piano, not because he's soloing intensely, but he's just playing so emotively. Both tracks kind of have these thematic chords at the beginning and end of the songs, and in the middle have an experimental weird interlude, kind of an obvious formula. But still, the interludes in the midst of these chords are pretty thought-provoking. The first of which is kind of glitchy, experimental, electronic. The second of the two is much more serene, ambient. The track I Want to Feel Good Part 2, though, kind of throws a, a monkey wrench into the works, a surprise, if you will. It's really one of the most traditionally sounding jazz songs on this entire LP. I mean, it's actually kind of hokey and, and just upbeat in its mood because of that, and I think it is pretty smile-inducing. Maybe not so much for me, because, you know, I'm a depressed, downer soul. 
cool. But this song throws yet another experimental interlude in the middle, which does kind of make things a little refreshing, and the band does make these happy, happy chords sound a little stranger as the song progresses. So they definitely experiment, definitely do something that's, you know, oh, uh, you know, oh, they did that, huh, hmm. <laughs> and one of the final tracks on this LP, In Stitches, is a 14-minute long monster, and the band totally justifies this length with one cohesive piece, not a multi-phase song, but one extremely focused track that actually starts very quiet and builds climactically toward its end and has maybe the most intense playing on this entire LP as it builds. I mean, just drums, piano, bass, just freaking out, man. In terms of performance and songwriting, this LP is there. I mean, it's Definitely hard to just say, oh, it's jazz, because there are spots that do feel like rock. There are spots that do feel upbeat and poppy. But if I did have to say there's something I kind of hold issue with on this album, it is the sound, though the drums and the bass and, and, and piano do come through very clearly. They're very raw. They're very bare, skeletal. All these extra elements that Bad Plus adds to the mixture, the drum machines, the electronics, the synthesizers. For the most part, they sound kind of tinny, kind of flat. I wish they had a bit more beef to them. I wish they had a bit more volume to them. And sure, these things do help the Bad Plus make a, a different and a new record for them. But I would definitely be interested in hearing these sounds kind of brought up a little bit and rotated into the foreground because I think there's a ton of potential for the direction the Bad Plus is moving in on this LP. Not to say that that potential isn't realized in a sense on this album itself because I am feeling a light to decent eight on this LP. If you've given it a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano. The Bad Plus, forever. Mm -hmm.